in a world where carbs are your enemy, you need one man to help you fight your battles. That man is Jimmy. Combating nutrition, disinformation, and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live. And we're here with another episode of Jimmy Rants. If you're brand new to Jimmy Rants, welcome. JimmyRants.com is the website where all the fun begins. You'll see that we start off on Instagram. I do a couple of live videos every single day with this here show. So go follow me on Instagram at Living Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you're there, you can engage in the content live, just like all these people coming in right now. They are watching this live. If you miss the live, it's all good. You can watch it on replay for up to 24 hours. But after 24 hours, Instagram does make it go away forever and ever. But that's all right. We put all the past episodes up on YouTube. So if you'll type in a keyword search either on YouTube or Google of Jimmy Rants, you will find the show. And then finally, we have a Jimmy Rants podcast over on Apple Podcasts. All of these links, you guys, are at JimmyRants.com. Today's Jimmy Rants is going to be another one of those rants. Because those of us that live in America, we know that every five years, the United States Department of Agriculture comes out with their annual, or or I guess every five years, whatever you call that, uh, every five years they come out with a new dietary guidelines for Americans. And in those guidelines, they supposedly base it on the latest science. We've talked about this before on uh, on a previous Jimmy Rants where they don't always follow all the science. So let's be clear about that. But they do tend to try to put together some kind of an expert panel to come up with how Americans should be feeding themselves in order to be healthy. Well, yesterday, Canada decided to release their version of this. They did it a year before us. So this could be a sneak peek, you guys, of how it will go down in America, but I sure hope not. What Canada has done with their new 2019 Canada's Food Guide is they're trying to push Canadians to become vegan. And this is no lie. I've got all the details right here, you guys. There, I'm gonna see if I can get that on the screen for you guys. That is the new plate that they call Eat Well, Live Well. The new plate, half of the plate is fruits and vegetables. A quarter of the plate is whole grains. And the other quarter of the plate is plant-based protein. Do you see anything missing from that plate? That's right, meat. Meat. Let's look at what they have come up with. The New Canada's Food Guide explained, goodbye for food groups and serving sizes, hello hydration. Health Canada's updated manual for healthy eating offers fewer hard and fast rules and broader advice about how to live better. Here are some of the highlights. So they always uh, take a look at this Canada's Food Guide. And again, it's very similar to the United States Department of Agriculture's uh, their dietary guidelines for all Americans, the food plate, which is what we call it here in America. But they say that this new version of Canada's food guide is a new simplified approach that encourages plant-based eating. They're not even trying to hide it, you guys, that that's what they're trying to promote. Encouraging plant-based eating, reducing the emphasis heavily on meat and dairy. If I lived in Canada right now, I would be totally PO'd because meat and dairy are not unhealthy. I don't care how much vitriol they put towards it, how much propaganda they try to make about meat and dairy. Those things are an extraordinarily healthy part of your life. Now, yes, some people have a sensitivity to dairy and may need to limit it, but meat Meat is the basis 
for every healthy society that's ever lived and thrived, meat, okay? And animal-based foods have incredible health benefits, but they never talk about those. They always wanna talk about the health benefits of plant-based diets and veganism. So this is, this is upsetting. If I was in Canada today, I would be in an uproar. I would be marching to your capital and going, whoa, 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 because this is unacceptable. If you're just joining us, Canada's food guide was just released yesterday with the brand new guidelines for how Canadians should be eating. And it ain't pretty. They're pushing Canadians to become vegan. For the past four decades, Health Canada has instructed Canadians that a healthy diet consists of specific servings across four food groups set across a rainbow background. But the new guidelines unveiled on Tuesday not only does away with those four groups, it eliminates the serving numbers and sizes altogether. It replaces the rainbow with that plate that I showed you guys just a moment ago. That's the new guideline right there is that plate. Half of it, fruits and vegetables, a quarter of it whole grains, and the other quarter plant-based proteins. So here are the changes. The four food groups had until this week uh, been more or less unchanged since they debuted in 1977. That was around the same time America was starting to come up with their dietary guidelines for Americans. The four food groups used to be milk and milk products, that was one, meat and alternatives, that's two, grains, that's three, fruits and vegetables, that's four. So that was the four food groups. This new guide, which was revealed by the health minister in Canada, reduces it down to three. Eat more plants, eat less meat, and eat less dairy is the new mantra they're trying to promote. And as such, the remaining groups are fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and proteins, which they're heavily promoting plant-based proteins such as tofu and chickpeas. This is disgusting because animal-based proteins are the only, hear me loud and clear, only source of complete proteins. You cannot get complete proteins consuming tofu and chickpeas. I'm sorry, you just can't. Now, if they threw in there, uh, along with uh, limited animal-based proteins such as eggs and fish, I'd have been okay with that. But the fact that they put in there plant-based proteins such as tofu and chickpeas, that's disgusting. In the protein category, meat and dairy is de-emphasized. The new guide says among protein foods, cons consume plant-based much more often than animal-based. The regular intake of plant-based foods, vegetables, fruits, whole grains, plant-based proteins have a positive effect on your health, including, get this, you guys, a lowered risk of cardiovascular disease, colon cancer, and type 2 diabetes. No. No. No, it does not. All those carbohydrates that they're encouraging people to consume, yes, they're real food. But once someone is damaged in their metabolism and has insulin resistance, has metabolic syndrome, has type 2 diabetes, the very wrong thing to tell those people is to cut back on animal-based foods because those are healing to those bodies. And it's disgusting to me that they're putting this dribble out here. You're going to lower your risk of cardiovascular disease, colon cancer, and type 2 diabetes when there's no evidence whatsoever that meat in the diet does any of those things, causes any of those conditions to develop. It does not. But here's what does happen. When you eat the way they're promoting lots of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and plant-based proteins, if you're type 2 diabetic, your A1C will be out of control. Your insulin levels will be way out of control. Your need for diabetes medications will go way up. And let's get started on cardiovascular disease because all of the markers of good cardiovascular health will go in the wrong direction. You're going to be lowering your HDL cholesterol. You're going to be increasing your triglycerides. Neither one of those is a good thing. You're going to be raising inflammation levels in the body. This is a disgrace. 
Canada, you should be ashamed of yourself. The, the government leaders that are putting out this, this is just horrible. I, I just can't believe Canada's food guide is now promoting a vegan diet as if that's healthy. Somebody's got to get up there and slap them upside the head because this is disgusting. This shift away from meat and dairy sparked fierce opposition from the respective industries. It better. I think the beef industry, I think the dairy industry, they should be up in arms petitioning the government saying you are deceiving the public. I bet there's a lawsuit from this. I would not be surprised. In 2017, the Globe reported that the meat industry and other government departments were lobbying Health Canada to soften its approach. Earlier this month, a representative from the beef producers told the Globe that it would be dangerous to equate meat with plant-based proteins. He's exactly right. They are not the same. What was that old, uh, one of these things just doesn't belong here. That's where plant proteins uh, belong in this discussion. They don't belong with animal-based proteins because they are not even close to being the same. Tofu and chickpeas, really? That's where we're going to get our protein from? Ugh. A statement from the Dairy Farmers of Canada said, the new guide does not reflect the most recent and mounting scientific evidence available. And that's the bugaboo, you guys. If they can just do this stuff without actually building it on real, hard, solid scientific evidence, what's to stop America from following this same trend? What's to stop the dietary guidelines for Americans put out by the United States Department of Agriculture every five years, and it's coming next year. Next year's when they're announcing the brand new guidelines, you guys. And what's to stop them from pulling this same crap that Canada has? Previous statements from the organization, the, the Dairy Farmers Organization, had warned that this move would be detrimental to the long-term health of future generations, as well as having a, a negative impact on the dairy farmers. See, nobody's talking about that aspect of this. That aspect of this is what's really egregious. How many people could stand to benefit from adding in meats and dairy to their diet and yet they're being discouraged and the government is encouraging this discouragement, which is then hurting the economy of these poor farmers that are trying to make a living. To me, it's just gross that they're doing this. And here's the thing. When this was posted and people were getting upset, some people are like, well, people don't pay attention to those guidelines. They don't matter. I've heard that about the uh, dietary guidelines for Americans too. People don't pay attention to those. They know they're bogus. It's not about that, you guys. Because all of the, at least here in America, I don't know what it's like in Canada, but all of the government programs and military and uh, uh, public schools and all of this is all predicated on what the dietary guidelines say. So that school lunch that your kid is, is eating at, at school, if they go to a public school, it's ha it has to be based on what the standards are in the dietary guidelines. It has to. They're mandated. If you uh, uh, live on a military base and you go to the commissary, guess what? What they provide in the commissary is based on the dietary guidelines. So again, I don't know what it's like in Canada, but I'm assuming there's similar infringements into society, that these guidelines go so much deeper than just, well, I won't pay attention to them. It's more, it's deeper than that, guys. And you have to know this. The new guide is distilled into one strikingly simple image, a plate of food filled with roughly half fruits and vegetables, the remaining divided into whole grains and plant-based proteins. The image is meant to convey a simple message, according to Health Canada, eat a diet made up of roughly half fruits and vegetables and half of the remaining. You know what they could do to, where did it go? They could do to that plate, if you're just joining us, this is how Health Canada wants Canadians to be eating. And so over here, they've got fruits and vegetables. The other side, they have whole grains and plant-based proteins. If they would replace the fruits and vegetables with just non-starchy green leafy vegetables and then put the other half of the plate as meat and fat, that would be a healthy plate. 
And it would be simple. If their objective is to be simple and scientifically accurate and actually effective in helping people's health, then they need to make half the plate vegetables. I'm willing to give them even that. I think maybe even three quarters of the plate should be meat. But let's say half the plate uh, vegetables of the non-starchy and green leafy kind, the other half the plate uh, fatty meats and, and sources of fat. I'm good with that. I think that would be a good, simplistic way to do it. The way they're doing it now, they're trying to push people towards veganism. And that's disgusting. Gone are specific recommendations to eat a specified number of serving sizes across all of the groups. Gone, too, is information about what makes up a serving size. Four foods, what we heard from Canadians and stakeholders on the previous guidelines was that it was so difficult and a bit too complicated. It's still complicated. Because what do you do when people want to have meat in the diet? It doesn't fit on that plate. There is no meat on that plate. None. It's missing. No meat at all. So how does that simplify anything? Because whether you like it or not, Health Canada, people in Canada are still going to eat meat. And those people that embrace a low-carb, high-fat, ketogenic diet... You bet your sweet bippy they're going to be eating meat still. So why are you ostracizing them? Why are you making them out to be the bad guy? The new approach, he said, is not about portions, but about proportions. By following the half fruits and vegetables rule, he said the department hopes to make the guide real and actionable in your everyday life. He added that more specifics will probably be added later, though likely geared towards health professionals and institutions who need, need guidance in developing meal plans and diets. Translation, we got to sell this crap to the doctors so they tell you how to eat because the doctors don't know what the bleep they're talking about when it comes to diet. So we're going to tell them how you need to be eating. That's what that means. And here's the thing. Half of the plate, fruits and vegetables. They throw those two foods together as if they're the same. Guys, if you think fruits and vegetables are identical in nutrition, you're not paying attention. Fruits in and of themselves are not unhealthy, but they do for people with insulin resistance and for people with an aversion to sugars and carbohydrates, they do have a lot of sugar in them. And so they're not a free-for-all. And yet, you tell people, fill half your plate with fruits and vegetables. Guess what they're going to put? Bananas, apples. They're going to put all the best tasting, sweetest fruits they can find. And they may throw a little bit of lettuce on there, but you're encouraging people to eat the very thing that's going to make type 2 diabetes, uh, the, the colon cancer they talked about earlier, uh, cardiovascular disease, all worse, not better. Now, they did have a, a few good things in the report, so I do, I do want to mention that in all uh, fairness here. They did say that sugary drinks are the main source of total sugars in the diet, so therefore we're promoting to drink more water. That was good. Uh, they also said uh, previous uh, food guides had recommended 100% fruit juice as a healthy option, um, but the new version says... The new guide labels 100% fruit juice as a sugary drink. So that's a good thing as well. It's so funny. They can acknowledge that, that the fruit juice is contributing to things like dental decay, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. But they don't see that fruit could do the same thing. Anyway, I digress. The new guide also introduces warnings against alcohol consumption. They say it contributes a lot of calories with no nutrition. It's also linked to various disease states. Um, bu -bu 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 -bum. And, and they're promoting that people should not be eating so many processed foods. So guys, the bottom line here is Canada has shot the first uh, shot across the bow, as they say, with their new 2019 Canada's Food Guide. And if you just joined us, they are pushing a heavy, heavy vegan diet. Half the plate is fruits and vegetables. A fourth of the plate is whole grains. And the other fourth of the plate is, get this, plant-based proteins like chickpeas and tofu. No meat is being promoted. And again, if I lived in Canada today, I would be 
in a tizzy. I would be causing such an uproar, which is why I'm here in America causing an uproar today because we may be seeing this same movie playing out one year from now when the USDA dietary guidelines for Americans are released. And if they try to pull this same crap in America, bring it, bring it. All right, guys, I wanna see what you guys have to say. I'm sure this is gonna get a lot of comments, so thanks for being here. Welcome in, welcome me in. Uh, the upside of my dog waking me up is being able to see you live. Oh, thanks, Bon Bon, thanks for being here. Thank God you're talking about this. I'm dying as a Canadian today, says Keto Kazanchik. Yeah, I, I saw this yesterday, and so many of uh, your fellow uh, Canadians wrote to me and said, please rant about this. So I'm like, absolutely, this is disgusting. Canada better gear up their socialized medicine program, says Bullock in 2018. Sadly, there will be more people going to see the doctor if they actually eat like this. And guess what? That's gonna make people hungry. And what happens when people get hungry? They get cravings and then they go off the wagon and they just eat crap. This indirectly is going to be pushing more Canadians to eat a crap-based diet than probably anything they possibly could have done. Uh, T-Lip says, let's support the local farmers that are raising pastured animals, always. People think the meat industry has money. Plant-based industry has lots of money. Corn, oil, fuel, uh, grains, and sugar, says Alberto. Yeah, they really do. Keto Neo says, this is insane. I agree, bud. It is insane. But we're calling them out here today on Jimmy Rants. The good news for me is that meat prices are predicted to go down and vegetables to go up. I suppose that's a bright side way of looking at it, Case and Chick, is if nobody's buying meat because they believe these guidelines, then there'll be a whole lot of meat, and so that will lower the prices. So I guess that's a that's a bright side to look at this. Kitty Caddick, hey, Katharina, uh, the saddest part, somebody's going to make these changes for the worst. Yeah. And, and what liability, what uh, responsibility will it be if these people follow these guidelines exactly and they get sick and they die? No, no recourse for that. And yet they want to talk about, oh, you can't go keto, you'll die. Okay, okay, keep believing that. They're promoting vegan food for dogs too, says Alberto. I would not be surprised. That's obscene. How can they do, do this? Uh, loving every minute, ketosis, yeah. And like I said, if we're not careful here in America, guys, I'm getting this out on YouTube today. And so if you're watching this on YouTube and you're concerned that this is gonna happen here in America, you need to be writing to the Secretary of Health and the Secretary of Agriculture and let them know you do not want anything like this in our dietary guidelines because this will make us decidedly Less healthy, not more healthy. Uh, very sad, fatter Canadians and rising health problems coming for Canada, says Boss Philly. Sadly. Uh, Bullock in 2018 says, I hope Canada charts the results. Well, they'll say uh, if, if health markers get worse, things like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, if things get worse, they'll say, oh, that well, they've ignored the guidelines and they chose to eat junk food, so we can't help that. That's how they'll spin it because they've done the same thing here in America uh, saying, well, people don't follow the guidelines anyway. Nina Teicholz, uh, the author of a book called The Big Fat, Fat Surprise, she did her research on this and she found, looking at the statistical data, people obediently cut their fat. They obediently ate more healthy whole grains. They obediently did all the things that were in the dietary guidelines, and yet all of these health markers got worse, not better. Go get her book, The Big Fat Surprise. She shares all of that info in there. It's pretty disgusting, and we're going to see the same thing happen in Canada because of this new uh, Canada's food guide. American doctors push a high vegan diet. Not all of them, but you're right. Uh, they push a low fat diet. Uh, they talk about meat being unhealthy. So uh, you're probably right, Crystal. The U.S. grain market collapsed looking for a new market in other countries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kitty Caddick for sure. Plant-based protein. So grass-fed beef? 
<laughs> Thriving on fat. Yeah, my uh, the cows that eat uh, the, the grass, that's a plant-based diet. So indirectly, I'm eating plant-based when I have that grass-fed beef. So I like the way you're thinking. Thriving on fat, that's good. Canada, take it from us in the U.S. And all of our health issues run far, far away from this, says T-Lips. Yes. We uh, should invest in Alzheimer's centers because there's going to be a huge need. Alzheimer's, type 2 diabetes, obesity, heart disease, cancer, you name it. It's going to get worse. H.V. Moore says absolute disgrace is right. It's sad. Joette says, speaking of diabetes, did you see the cost of insulin rising? Well, um, if you go keto and you avoid the Canada's food guide uh, and what they're telling you to be consuming, you won't have to worry about that issue. Here in Ohio, home of the Kill Corn Fields, you always see information about how grains are healthy for your diet. Crystal, that's just propaganda, as you well know, and sadly, people buy into it. It seems so compelling. And again, when it's reinforced by all the health officials, reinforced by your doctor, reinforced by dietitians, people are like, well, everybody believes it. Why is it unhealthy when they hear us saying that? Why is it unhealthy? Everybody else is saying it's healthy. Right now in the morning news, everyone's celebrating this progressive and science-based healthful diet plan here in Canada after consulting with experts and dietitians. Keto case and chick, they've got to put lipstick on that pig. They do. And let's hope that people realize it's a pig. And then they eat the pig. That'd be great. Uh, went from full-blown diabetic to pre-diabetic eating meat and dairy. I'll stick with that. Hashtag keto for life, says Ashton. Yeah, a lot of us have gotten healthier by choosing the exact opposite diet of what this... Uh, Canada's food guide is telling them to do in Canada. They say it's based on science and evidence. Yeah, there's really no, there's no randomized control clinical trial evidence that supports what they're promoting now in Canada for nutrition. This is disgusting. Why is it always dirty for the meat industry to promote their product while the grain industry can do it without the same complaint, thriving on fat? And here's the thing with the grain industry. A lot of the grain-based foods are not whole grains at all. They're highly processed grains. So they say, oh, we're not about refined grains like white flour. We're about whole grains. Well, most whole grains are also heavily refined to make them edible. And, oh yeah, by the way, because grains are disgusting without having some kind of something to cover that taste, they add sugar in gobs. So not only do you get the whammy of the whole grains, you also get the double whammy of having the sugar as well. It's no bueno. Soils are depleted, worthless for healthy plant-based foods. Veganism, says Mark, the neoliberal diet for the neoliberal world order. Make you fat and sick on the front end and then give them magic pills to cure all your ills on the back end. I know you're half joking, but that's pretty spot on, dude. I like that. Deborah says, I think England will be following Canada uh, as now on some of the meat-free products are now being called vegan. Yeah, it's gross. Live and listen healthy. It's already started here in America. Just uh, subtle advertising for vegan pet foods and news broadcasts about if you're thinking of going plant-based, WTF. Yeah, it's starting in the culture, although keto is still ruling the roost. So uh, low-carb, high-fat, um, I do think there could be a nice middle ground between those two, which is where my Keto Talk co-host, Dr. Will Cole, has tried to fall with his Ketotarian book. If you haven't seen that, he's trying to say, okay, for those of you that do plant-based, here's, here's, here's how to do it better. And of course, he's including eggs and fish and lots of healthy fats in with those vegetables. No grains, though. Um, there is, the, there is a right way to do it, and the way that Canada's food guide is pushing it is not the right way. Agriculture industry even pushed their food into the meat industry through corn grains. Believe me, they have more power uh, through money than the meat industry, says Alberto. Yeah. Big Pharma continues to win uh, and laughing all the way to the bank with those who fall for this crap. HV Moore, that is a sad reality is that this does not make people healthier. It just pushes them into the system even deeper. Um, and who dies along the way? They don't care. 
If government programs are based on that, they found sneaky, ugly ways to cut the costs. Yep, they sure did. Apple Cats uh, says, I'm just going to sit here and eat my bacon and drink my coffee while listening. I love you. That is awesome. Uh, Ann Janaski says, what happened to eggs and the oils? Exactly. There is no uh, sign on this cockamamie plate that they're telling Canadians to eat from. That's the plate. There's no eggs. There's no oils. There's no meats. Half of the plate is fruits and vegetables. A fourth of the plate is healthy whole grains. And a fourth of the plate is plant-based proteins like tofu and chickpeas. It is utterly disgusting. <laughs> Mark says, hashtag kiss my keto, Canada. Exactly. I almost threw that as a tagline, but I could literally do that with every rant that I do. <laughs> HV Moore says, my nephew is vegan, just got married a few months ago. It was catered by a vegan restaurant that he works for. And honestly, I could not even think about putting any of those mystery foods into my body. I would be lost. Of course, I'm doing carnivore uh, keto right now. So I would really be lost if there was no meat whatsoever to eat. I guess I would fast and I'd be okay with that much more so than any of that stuff. Dana's uh, Hope says, sad day for Canada. There is a group of LCHF doctors and nutritionists who begged for a sit at the table. They were all denied. I wonder what Dr. Jason Fung is thinking today. He's there in Toronto. He has to be shaking his head. And knowing Jason, he's probably saying a few choice words. Uh, start with an F and end with a uck. And uh, so... Uh, Bullock in 2018, uh, Canada, look at California, vegans successfully ruining California. A lot of strange things have happened, that's for sure, when veganism has been able to get a foothold anywhere. Fruits, grains are pure glucose and fructose, says Ann. Yep. It looks like some uh, on educate, or some uneducated fool just put this together with their own vegan agenda. If it was made by somebody who truly knows what this will do to you, the only thing we can call it is selective genocide. Beth, well said. Uh, it is unfortunate. So if you're watching this and you live in Canada, please don't buy into it. It's propaganda. You're being lied to. What I would want to know is what studies are they basing these recommendations on? And when you look at those studies, I can almost guarantee you every single one of the studies will be based on observational data, not actually hard scientific randomized controlled clinical trials. There is no randomized controlled clinical trial that says anything bad about consuming meat and dairy products. None. None. So let's stop it. Canada just shot itself in its in the foot, says Bullock in 2018. They probably did. Mark says Canada needs a government change, but I think they need to stop being um, controlled by special interests. Same thing in here in America. A lot of what happens uh, within our government system is controlled by special interests that lobby Capitol Hill. So it's not just a Canada thing. I'm sure that's all over the world. Loving every minute of ketosis says, so what do we do? Well, what you do is you ignore the guidelines. You follow the diet and the nutritional health and lifestyle changes that work for you. And then when you're thriving in your health and other people start to see a decline in theirs, guess who they're going to come to for help? That's right. It's you. Live by example. I can't believe they did this and denied low-carb doctors a seat at the table. Chrissy Sue, there's a lot of stuff that, not just in Canada, here in America, right now, they're, they're trying to seat the uh, Dietary Guidelines Committee members, and they are denying at every turn, every single low-carb, real food, um, ketogenic doctor that has tried to apply. Oh, you're, you're too dogmatic about this. And so they don't let them at the table. And yet they'll let vegans at the table. They'll let people that are a part of industry uh, from the grain industry at the table. It truly is astonishing how much behind the scenes happens that determines these things like dietary guidelines here in America or Canada's food guide uh, to our neighbors to the north. It's, it's pretty bad. 
Nicholas says, I'm curious, do you think the average person follows the government guidelines? I've never consulted them. Do doctors treat based on them? Nicholas, we talked about this earlier in this rant. It's not about you and whether you're choosing to actually follow them or not. As I mentioned earlier, Nina Teicholz did say with her research, people did follow the dietary guidelines in America. But it's truly not about that because like you said, Doctors are using it. Well, the dietary guidelines say in Canada, the doctors can say, Canada's food guide, you've got to eat half your plate. And so they're going to push this crap on people. Or if you have obesity or some disease, you go uh, see the dietitian. Guess what the dietitian's going to do? They're going to parrot this stuff. When they go to schools, what are they going to hear? They're going to parrot this stuff. Every facet of our society is impacted by this, whether you personally uh, adhere to it or not is pretty much irrelevant at this point because it does impact the culture. My dad says the government would love if we ate beans, rice, potatoes. It's cheap to feed the poor and keep them sick, says Crystal. You have a wise father. My other concern is now finding a doctor going to be a continued fight with health care to continue this way of eating, says Dana's. <clears throat> well, if you live in America, I have a doctor's website uh, for a ketogenic friendly doctor, ketogenicdocs.com, if you want to check that out. Why is there a war on meat in the middle of the successful keto movement? Well, Chrissy Sue, you know why. There are interests at stake here, pharmaceutical industry, the vegan movement. There's so many, in, the food industry, there's so many industries that stand to lose a lot of money if keto is allowed to stay popular. And so if they vilify meat and scare people away from meat, and then people aren't successful on their keto because they're not eating meat anymore, guess what? You kill keto. And guess what that happens to all those industries that have a vested interest in keto not being popular? they get stronger again. So this doesn't surprise me. When people tell me keto is going to kill me, I respond with, that's okay. I'm going to live pain-free now, Crystal said. <laughs> they blame noncompliance on the rise in disease. That they will. Well, you just didn't follow the guidelines. You didn't, you didn't follow Canada's food guide or you wouldn't have gotten unhealthy. Not knowing that the very things that they did do from the guidelines is what caused it. Uh, CKS of 3G says reducing the population long-term, making people unhealthy, estrogenic issues, cancer, PCOS, and more. Pharmaceutical companies and doctors keep getting richer. You almost hate to have that jaded view of the world, but it's hard not to come to that conclusion once your eyes have been open to what they're doing. Uh, we're vegan by proxy, says uh, Crystal. Yeah, if, they, if, if we follow the guidelines to the T, um, that's what they would hope everybody would become. Uh, keto on a paper plate says, what are the nutritional guidelines like in other countries? Most nutritional guidelines around the world mimic what we have here in America. And usually America leads the way. Once America adopted more of a low fat, high carb diet around the world, all of the uh, nutritional guidelines typically around the world tended to lean that way. There's a few exceptions. I'm trying to think where the guidelines aren't so stringent in other countries, but for the most part, they are predicated on a low-fat, high-carb diet. I try to tell people following a vegan diet why they are so hungry and starving. They just won't listen to me. They're terrified of fat. Terrified. Slusher girl, I've talked about this often, that the biggest obstacle for people to embrace a healthy keto lifestyle is they're scared to death of fat. If you could get people over their fat phobia, Johnny bar the door, everybody and their mama would be eating keto. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Disgusting, disgusting, disgusting. I agree. Vegans are eating my food's food. Stop it. <laughs> Olga, I love you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Can you imagine what would happen if they rolled back on the subsidies? I don't know if Canada has subsidies as well. She's so keto. That's a great point. Here in America, a lot of crops are grown because they're subsidized. They're, the farmers are incentivized to grow corn and to grow soy and to grow all of these plant-based foods. What if they didn't have that? What if they didn't get incentivized to grow this kind of stuff and it was pretty much straight up economy? You could get a lot of money for meat-based products, um, much more so than you ever would 
plant-based ones. Uh, I live in rural Alberta, says Anne, and my heart aches for the farmers. That That is the sad part of today, you guys. With these new Canada's food guidelines, you got dairy farmers, you got farmers that have been providing meat and trying to do things the right way for their customer base that, that wants to be healthy. And now they basically have been slapped in the face, in the face kicked in the crotch, for doing things the right way. And to me, that's the biggest travesty in all this. Nobody's gonna talk about that in the mainstream news there in Canada uh, with the ramifications of these new guidelines. They're not gonna talk about that. They don't care. They just don't. Uh, keto for real life people, food wars, how sad we have division caused by special interest groups. And see, that's the thing, Nancy. I think if people would be given a choice, Hey, look, if you want to do more of a, of a vegan-styled, healthy diet, that's your plate. If you want to do more of a keto-styled, healthy plate, have half the plate be made up of fatty meats, the other half of non-starchy green leafy vegetables, maybe a little more fat, and then that's your plate. If you want to do more of a Mediterranean-style diet, if they gave people options rather than saying, this is the guidelines then I'd be okay with that. Then people can make a choice. Wow, that one with half meat and half vegetables looks pretty darn good to me. But they'll never do that because again, it's not about health. It's about appeasing these special interests. Uh, bu -bu -bu. So if you have a general question, Ruby, please email me. As always, you can send me a message here through Instagram or you can email me livinglowcarbman at charter.net. We're doing a show called Jimmy Rants where I'm going off on a rant all about the 2019 Canada's Food Guide where they're pushing veganism. So please send me uh, that question uh, and I'm happy to help you. Uh, the ramifications of the domino effect of other countries following suit is very unsettling. It is. It is, Nancy. Canada's food guy has always been a joke. So disappointed. Dawn, it is a joke. But here's the thing. It's no joke when it comes to the ramifications in your culture, in your country, because it has tentacles that go into every fi uh, fabric of your society. If it's anything like what it is here in America, guys, go Google dietary guidelines for Americans and, and look up all of these places um, where it is infused into the culture, you'll be shocked. I mean, absolutely flabbergasted by how much of that stuff gets into the culture. And people, well, I don't pay attention. Well, somebody's paying attention and they're forced to pay attention because it's the law of the land regarding nutrition. It's, it's disgusting. Hasn't obesity gone up in America since this food pyramid and current guidelines came into use? Chrissy Sue, they say that the people aren't doing the guidelines. So yes, of course it has. Yes, diabetes has gotten worse. Yes, uh, heart disease has gotten worse. But they say because Americans don't follow the guidelines. And so that's where Nina Teichel said, oh yeah, I looked up the statistics. People have cut their fat obediently. They've eaten more healthy whole grains obediently. And yet all of these things have gotten worse not better. I'm telling you for years, I tried to stick to that deadly so-called healthy diet. Uh, while I got heavier, my doctor basically called me a liar. And Crystal, that's what's going to happen here. When people don't do well on this diet that Health Canada thinks is healthy. Does anybody see satiety on that plate? Does anybody see uh, that they'll be able to go long periods of time without eating with that plate? Can anybody see themselves eating that every single day of every single week of every single month of every single year for the rest of your life? Not me. All right, let's see here. I drive uh, drove once from uh, Syracuse to Manhattan at one moment. I saw miles and miles of corn crops. Yeah, they're paid. They're paid to do that. Dr. Barry says there's a war on meat, and I believe it, especially now. Oh, it, there's been a war on meat. I've been uh, in this space for a little while, about 15 years. And since I've been online, there's been a huge war on meat. So, um, and it is odd that it's happening in the midst of the keto revolution. 
Again, bring it. Bring it. Follow the money, find the rat. So who is the money behind this movement? It's the vegan movement. Uh, th there, there's no doubt about that. As small as the actual number of people that do a vegan diet is, the organization of veganism is very well established. They're highly, highly organized, you guys. And they all get on the same team. You know, we talk about often with keto uh, and paleo and Whole30 and uh, Primal and all these groups that if we came together in the way that the vegans come together, we would be so much more stronger, powerful, uh, more able to respond to this kind of nonsense and have a powerful voice in how dietary guidelines and, and food recommendations are made. But no, we, we remain splintered. Meanwhile, the vegans all laugh at us because they're much smaller than we are, but highly, highly organized. Uh, indirectly, everyone follows the guidelines. One day you're eating real food and the other, I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> I guess that's true. Looks like all the foods that led to my myriad of health problems. For a lot of us, that's true. All right, guys, so the bottom line in this is if you live in Canada, I hope you are outraged and I hope you do something about it. I hope you write to your uh, government officials that you write to Health Canada and let them know this is incredibly bad information that they are disseminating to the people of Canada. And to all my American friends and even friends around the rest of the world, don't think this can't happen where you live. Don't think that because this happened in Canada, it won't happen in the United States of America. It won't happen in the UK. It won't happen in Australia. It won't happen in New Zealand, South Africa, wherever you are in the whole world, all of us are susceptible to having this very thing being shoved down our throats in our country. We need to stand up for what is right and realize that there is a decided anti-meat agenda going on, you guys. And the way you combat that is you live your life eating meat, eating dairy, having all the things that they tell you you're not supposed to have, and you thrive in your health. So if you, you're thriving in your health, how are they going to deny that what you're doing is a good thing? They can't. So let's live by example. Let's be the antithesis of what Canada's food guide is telling us to do. We don't have to eat this way there is a better way to eat, and we found it. That's it for this Jimmy Rance. JimmyRance.com is the website. As always, hop on over to JimmyRance.com. You'll see that we start off on Instagram. I do a couple of live videos every single day. Not always this fired up uh, with a rant, but this was a fun one today, you guys. Go follow me on Instagram, Livin Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you're there, you can engage live, just like all my awesome Jimmy Rancers here today. I just, I just named you guys. You're called Jimmy Rancers uh, here today. And if you missed the live, you can watch it on replay for up to 24 hours. After 24 hours, it disappears from. Instagram, but we do put all the past episodes up on YouTube. So go follow me on YouTube, type in Jimmy Rants. You will find the show. Once you find the show, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel so you never miss a single episode over on YouTube. And then finally, we have a Jimmy Rants podcast, which has the best of the best moments of this here show. And you bet this one's going to go on the Jimmy Rants podcast. Uh, so go follow me on Apple Podcasts, the Jimmy Rants podcast. JimmyRants.com is the website. So until next time, we'll see you then. <laughs>